Since February 2014, Russia and Ukraine have been at war, also known as the Russia-Ukraine War. Following Ukraine's revolution of dignity, Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine and backed pro-Russian separatists in the war against Donbas against Ukrainian government forces. Fighting for the first eight years of the conflict also included naval incidents, cyber warfare, and heightened political tensions. Due to a Russian military buildup near Ukraine's border, tensions between the two countries grew during 2021. On February 24, 2022, the situation significantly escalated as Russia began an invasion of Ukraine on a large scale. Would you believe that Ukraine has military troops to invade Russia's occupied Snake Island? Welcome to Military Future, and in our video today, we're explaining the biggest invasion of Ukraine to retake their Snake Island from Russia. So stay until the end of this video to learn more about the invasion. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and hit the bell icon to see more exciting content like this. Despite being only a few dozen kilometers from Odessa, it was the scene of some of the war's most famous moments. In spite of its unassuming appearance as a little rock in the middle of the Black Sea, Snake Island has already played a central role in some of the war's most significant narratives after more than six months of fighting. Here, Ukrainian defense forces uttered the now famous phrase, a Russian warship. Russian troops took Snake Island, a small but strategically significant outpost in the Black Sea, about 70 nautical miles south of Odessa, on February 24th, the first day of the invasion of Ukraine. According to reports, the 13 Ukrainian soldiers stationed there bravely resisted the attacks of the Russian occupants twice, but were unable to carry on due to a lack of ammunition. Images and audio of Ukrainian fighters defiantly pointing at a Russian cruiser and demanding it, go fuck yourself, went viral. The Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, honored the defenders posthumously and declared them all dead. However, it has since been shown that some of them survived when Russian forces were forced to retreat, and the yellow and blue flag was raised once more, the battleship Moskva was sunk while defending the island's airspace. Despite all of this media attention, however, mysteries still surround why Russia expended so much material holding this lump of rock, and how Snake Island came to occupy such a significant location, with equipment losses estimated at close to $1 billion. The story of the fight on Snake Island and how this tiny site came to have such a huge impact is being told today in both nations' narratives. In War of Graphics, even if Snake Island, to give it its actual name, had a small impact. The mini ostrich only became widely known after Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, but there had been growing indications for some time that this unimpressive rock was a major flashpoint in that country. Prominent ultra-nationalists like Alexander Dugan had begun to wax poetic about its sacred geography and the mystical quality that allowed its owners to shape Western history. In contrast, military analysts had begun war game invasion scenarios and noted that Russian forces were well prepared for invasion. With only 0.2 kilometers, or less than 50 acres, Snake Island is tiny, flat, and historically useless. Situated 35 kilometers from the coasts of Romania and Ukraine, it was neglected for a long time because it had no resources to mine, no fresh water to support life, and no snakes or other native wildlife. Ironically, there was simply no point in anyone settling there. That is not to say, however, that it has never attracted human attention. In ancient times, a shrine to Achilles stood on the island, and occasionally lighthouses were built to help ships enter the Greek city of Olbia. In more recent times, however, it was primarily used as a pawn by rival powers. This Snake Island was used as an outpost for monitoring rival activities in Crimea, with the complete use of a radar station and air defense station from 2014 after the annexation of Crimea by Russia. Since the war began, everyone has learned that Ukraine is a major exporter of grain, most of which is transported by ship through the Black Sea. The two most important ports are Odessa and Kiran which require ships to pass close to Snake Island in order to reach their destination. As a result, Western analysts have raised concerns that Russia may attempt to seize the island in the future. This is why Vladimir Zelensky visited Ukraine in 2021 and declared that the island, like the rest of our territory, belonged to Ukraine. As the sun set on the tense evening of February 23, 2022, with the war now only hours away, 
It was over a snake island protected by less than 100 personnel. Despite Zelensky's fierce remarks, the size of the actual garrison station on Snake Island revealed how Kiev actually felt about defending it. The most likely explanation for this is that no one realistically expected the garrison to repel an attack, while within range of fighter jets launched from Crimea. It was predicted to fall to Russia within hours of the conflict's start. And that's exactly what happened at 5 a.m. on February 24th, when Vladimir Putin appeared on television to announce a special military operation against Kiev, which is just another way of saying a mad imperial war of conquest. So how do you guys feel after learning this much? Are you excited to know what happened after the seizure of Snake Island? Watch our entire video and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel in case you missed it. By seizing Snake Island from Ukraine, there was a massive loss in their economy. Snake Island was their major source of income from transporting their grains. Russia secured a critical piece of the puzzle that allowed Moscow to control the Western Black Sea by seizing Snake Island so early in the invasion. For three reasons, this was crucial from an operational and strategic standpoint for Moscow. It implied that the Russian Navy could take part in the cruise missile bombardment of Ukraine. In the meantime, it allowed the invaders to blockade Ukraine by denying access to and from Ukrainian ports and threatening Odessa with an amphibious assault. While the majority of observers have concentrated on the conflict on land, Ukraine has made a concerted effort to challenge Russia's naval superiority. The cruiser Moskva was sunk on April 14th, marking Kyiv's first significant win. This demonstrated that the Russian Navy could not operate safely in the vicinity of the Ukrainian coast due to the ongoing threat posed by anti-ship missiles, particularly the Western-supplied Harpoon missiles and the Ukrainian-developed Neptune missile. This was in addition to the prestige of sinking the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet. A crucial component of the Russian long-range theater air defense system was the Moskva. Because of its loss, Snake Island's strategic significance as a base for electronic warfare and air defense systems increased, and Ukraine had made multiple attempts to retake the island. Despite the fact that Ukraine is not anticipated to station soldiers in the near future, the Ukrainian flag is already flying once again over Snake Island. Beyond the symbolic value, it is more important that the Russian forces are no longer able to take advantage of the rock's strategic location than it is for Ukraine to be present there. On June 21st, British intelligence warned of Russia's loss of control over the Western Black Sea. However, Russia was hurriedly planting more mines in an effort to continue its capacity to blockade Ukraine until Ukraine retook Snake Island. Moscow has tried to weaponize food and attribute the blame to Western sanctions in an effort to unite the global south against the west, and blocking Ukraine has become a potent form of blackmail for Moscow. It is interesting to note that Russia's sudden announcement that it is willing to allow the free flow of grain from Ukrainian ports corresponds with its now proven inability to fully control the approaches or restrict entry to Odessa. In addition to this strategic loss, Russia will now attempt to maintain its advantage in international relations by blaming the West and Ukraine for the world food crisis and deflecting blame for the necessity of demining the corridor. For more great stuff, please make sure to view Military Future's other videos as well. We want to see you again soon with more exciting stuff, so if you like what you watched, please like and turn on the bell notification for more fascinating military videos. Goodbye!